So there is a question you want to look at. Write down four sex linked characters. Sex linked characters are not characters obtained from sexual intercourse. The question is not saying sex, sexual intercourse link characters. Sex link characters are characters which affect sexes. Whether it affects women, not men, or men, not women. Are you okay? One, boldness. Some some people, right? The camera is facing me, right? So some people they are bald. There's no hair here. Right? See the first most men than women is sex link. Why? You don't see women with bald hair, right? You see men. But the question is that <laughs> who gives birth to the man? It's the woman. But the man is bald, but the woman is not bald. Good. There are some exceptions. Now you pick thousand, you just see two of the women bald. But you can't see that. Now there's a city. This is a woman. And this is a man. The gender responsible for baldness, right? It's on the X. That is the ball. So this was a person, this is a woman, right? This is a male. This is also ball. There is no corresponding anomaly on the Y to suppress this X. So the man appeared to be bald. Remember, the woman gave birth to the man. So the woman is bald. Do you do what I'm saying? But there is a corresponding anomaly on the other X which was able to suppress the genes of baldness. So the woman appeared not bald. But when the woman gave birth to the man, the man also had a gene for baldness. There's no problem. We should get another corresponding allele to cover it, right? The permanent gene. But there is no allele on the white ovum. It's a free ovum. There's no allele on it. Are you okay? So he appears to be bald. That's why men are bald. Sex link. Are you okay? So it means in sex link, what causes that is born on the X. And unfortunately, the other opposite sex has something to suppress and the opposite does not have. Do you see why we call it sex link? That is why it can affect most male than females. Are you okay now? Good. All the two conditions here are all born. But just that they have what we call a corresponding element, opposite to suppress. The woman has it. The woman is fine. The man also has God. But there is nothing on the Y. Nothing stands on the Y. It doesn't contain any allele. Are you okay? So he appears to be God. Is you get it now? So do you see why certain things affect men, not women, and women, not women? That's the reason. No allele stands on the Y. The Y is a free entity. So are you okay? We have what we call hemophilia, bleeder disease. We bleed without stopping. It's just like genes is speedy, glucose test phosphate dehydrogenase. Glucose test phosphate dehydrogenase. That genes is speedy, right? That's also just like you can determine by the lab. Color blind, can't tell green, red. Nice blindness. That's also there. They are all just like characters. Are you okay now? So sex link characters are characters that affect the sexes, either the male or the female, right? Sex link. It's not sex link, it's not sexual intercourse link, it's sex link, gender. Using which chromosomes are responsible for the determination of sex? So, chromosomes responsible for the determination of sex in humans. We have what we call the X and what? Y chromosomes. Good. Using diagrams only, show the sex of a human or show how the sex of a human is determined, right? So you have to get what we call appearance. So that is that is female, right? And what? The male. Now we have what we call the genotype. So we have XX and what? XY. What is going on here? A genes occurs in pair, okay? So X and Y are the chromosomes. XX will form a female. You can't just say X is for female and Y for male. It's not true because the male also has something like X, right? Good. Now, we have what we call 
during birth, during the reproduction process, right? We have what we call segregation and recombination. Segregation is secretion. So the genes will break up, right? Then they recombine. That's what we call recombination, okay? So we have this. We have this. Good. That is segregation and re segregation. I've segregated, I've separated, okay? Now recombination, we recombine to see what we form. Good. So this goes with this. You see that? I produce something here as XX. Are you okay? This thing then matches with the other one. Position them well so I can have a part to record X1. Now this also combines with this XX. Now this combines with that XY. I was asked to use that one to determine the sex. What do I see here? So this is what we call F1 generation. You, you agree? But after crossing the period, you get F1, right? When you cross F1, you can get F2. So F1. It is male. No, it is female. It is male. It is female. It is male. So we can have... Are you okay now? You can have what we call uh phenotypic ratio it's in, it means in terms of phenotype what do you see then we have what we call genotypic ratio in terms of genotype what do you see right so when you pick phenotypic ratio that is doing looking at the phenotype right you have i think this is one is 25 percent okay 25 25 25, 25 that's 100 okay you can just call it one 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 that's four so you have what we call 50% male, 50% female. That was the chances of what? So phenotypic ratio is 2 is to 2. You see that? We have 2 male, that's phenotype. What you see? You see a male female. Now, genotypic ratio. So it's not all instances that they will ask you this question, right? But they want to go further in letting biology. Or pure biology, then you have to go deeper like this, right? If it's just science designed for not science to the real science, let's end somewhere here, okay? Good. So, that's somewhere here. Now, genotypic ratio. Now, if you have genotypic ratio, genotype, this is one, right? One is to two, is to one, is to two. Are you okay? So, there's one, is to two, is to one. One, that's just one, okay? Is to two. Are you okay? And one is towards two. That is it. It's all okay. So these are exceptions. You will not be practices. Depends on how the question is go. Okay? But in case they ask you about the phenotype, what do you see? You see 50%. So two is to that's 50% male, 50% female, right? One is what? 50% male, 50% what? Female. Good. So it means 1 is 25, 25, 25, 25, right? Are you okay? Good. So that is it. So this is the F1 phenotype. So this is F, uh, F1 phenotype. So this is also phenotype. I'll be that. So okay. This is also F1 what? Phenotype. Why? Because these are what you see. Female, male, female, male. Good. Okay, let's look at this application. Explain the term phenotype, genotype. Refer to notes, refer to video, as if it happened. Or refer to your mind, as if I recall. The next one. The offspring of a tall man and a short woman are all found to be tall. <laughs> wow. The offspring, the children of a tall man and a short woman are all found to be tall. With the aid of process or appropriate genetic process, illustrates the above observation. Good. So you have to get tall man. So the parent right. So before you do, you have to define what you want to use. 
Nobody said against whether that the gene for tall is capital T or the gene for tall is capital Y. No, you should define for the matter to know what you are using. Are you okay? So you can go this way. Let T be the gene for what? Tall. So because you will be suppressing, because you want to show dominance, you can use V to be short. It doesn't make sense, right? Because where on earth did you realize that T dominates V? But when you use small T, everybody understands that capital T you should be dominating small T. Are you okay? And they said the genes are in pair, they are identical. They are identical, they look alike. So they should be like that, okay? Good. So to show dominance, and I use this for short. So I can see leg T on tall and S short. If you do that and you come across this, what right do you have to say that T is dominating S? In which way? In which principle? But when you use small T, you can claim dominance. Please, you see why we define that like this? Right? Good. Amanda. Okay. So, as I said, light T be the gene for tall and small T be the gene for short. Don't say S because you can't tell whether capital T is dominating S as I said. But you can claim dominance for capital T and small T. Are you okay? Good. So these are the parents. Parental phenotype. We have a tall man, right? Short woman. Now we have parental genotype. Okay, I'm guessing the whole thing. So this is TT. And that is what? Small t, small t. Do you agree? Why did I double them up here? The genes are in pair, right? Good. Remember, it's an LLE. LLE, LLE forms what? A single gene. Are you okay? Good. Now, if you are defining your term, then you say, let's capital T, capital T be tall. Let's small t, small t be short. No, this definition is not proper, okay? Because when you come across this, how will you call it now? Because you said that this is tall, that this is short. So, oh, 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 this tall short? <laughs> Good. So, I'll define them well. Just capital T and not tall, okay? Small t short. Are you okay? Avoid this approach. It doesn't make sense, as you can see. Good. So, during segregation and recombination, we have this. Agreed? We have this. Ray combination. This and this. I found this. I found this. I found this. I found this. Their offsprings are all found to be what? Tall. Is it true that they are all tall? Is this tall? Yes. Don't say no. Why do you say this is not tall? I know. Is this tall? Yes. Why is it tall? Why is it tall? Yes. The capital T is dominating this. So are they all tall? Yes. Now what then are they homozygotes or heterozygotes? Yes, they have two different alleles for one particular gene. So they are all tall. Just that this small t is a recessive gene. It does not show in the outward appearance. The guy seems to be tall, but the guy secretly possess a short gene. No wonder two tall people can produce a graph. Are you getting it? Yes. You get the whole concept well. So all children are found to be tall, right? So this is F1 gem type, the thing that they all can right? All are tall. So what if I happen to form TT? Is it short or tall? Yes. Okay. If I have one capital T, capital T, is it still tall? Yes. Is it still tall? Yes. Good. Yes, that this is homozygous tall. This is heterozygous tall. Are you okay? Yes. This man is called a carrier. A carrier of what? A recessive short gene. 
This man is not a career. Are you okay now? Good. So anytime we give you a word, define the parameter you want to use. Let the marker know that this is what you're standing for. It may be color black. And this is what is standing for color white. Then know how to make your deductions from the drawing. Are you okay? Good. So this is 25, 25, 25, 25, right? So genotypically, this is 2 is to 2 is to 2 is to 2, right? Phenotypically, we are all tall. Good. I'll give you a segment, okay?